Hello mate and welcome to this video series, Introduction to RenPy. RenPy is an amazing visual novel engine created using Python, which allows its users to very simply create visual novels, but also allows more advanced users to fall back on the Python programming language itself to enable you to create some truly amazing games with very little coding knowledge. In this video series, I'm going to walk you through the process of installing RenPy and Atom.io, which is an amazing free text editor that will enable you to get up and running really quickly. And we will go through the process of getting started with your very first visual novel, including some more advanced coding practices for future video series. So without further ado, let's get stuck in. The first thing that we need to do is actually install RenPy. And we do that by visiting the website renpy.org. And as you can see here, the web page is nice. It's got some example visual novels down the right hand side. You can see that it's available for pretty much every kind of uh, installation that you possibly have. We're going to go to download the latest version. And then, as you can see, download sdkzzip.exe. We're going to click on that. And then once that's downloaded, we're going to install it wherever we so choose. Additionally, what I also recommend is that you visit atom.io, which will enable you to download their free text editor, which is fantastic and is my preferred code editor of choice for RemPy. So again, visit atom.io and hit the download button there. And as you can see, it will start downloading and then we can install that as soon as it has downloaded. Once RemPy has downloaded and installed, you're going to be able to run it and you will see this interface here. And what we're going to do is we're going to go into our preferences and as you can see, we can edit the directory where our games are stored. I've used my second hard drive with RemPy games being the folder. We can set our chosen language on the right hand side there and more importantly we can change our text editor to jedit the system editor which will normally revert to something like your text editor and because you've got atom installed you can choose atom and that is the system that we're going to be using and then you can go to return and as you can see here you've got the projects on the left hand side and then you also have the option to edit the files here but what we're going to do to get started straight away is we're actually going to create a brand new project. So what we're going to do is we're going to click on this icon here that says create new project. And then it's going to give us a little bit of information. So you'll be creating an English language project. Change the launcher language in preferences to create a project in another language. So all we're going to do here is we're going to hit continue. Then we have to choose a name for our project. So what I'm going to do is intro to RenPy. And I'm going to hit enter and then it's going to come up with a series of resolutions. I'm going to go for the biggest possible one, 1920 by 1080. And then we're going to hit continue. Next options that come up is our color scheme. We can actually set RemPy to choose different color schemes if we want. I kind of like the baby blue there. We can even choose what color our background are going to be. I prefer this option here, which is baby blue with a black background like so. Then I'm going to hit continue and then it will create the project. Once our project has been created, you can see that it's automatically highlighted in our projects tab. And then we can immediately go to edit file scripts.rpy like this. And then Atom will boot up. And on the left hand side, as you can see, our game folder has automatically been created there for us. And then in this window here, we have the ability to uh, edit our text and as you can see because i've got the rempy language or package installed already i can actually see that my code has been highlighted appropriately so what we can do is we can actually go to our settings here and then we can go to packages and we can actually find packages that have already been installed or we can install some new ones we can there we go we click on install and then if we were to search for rempy as you can see, language.rempy there, and then if I've already got it installed, so you can just hit install there and it will download and install that for you automatically. And then you will be in exactly the same position as I am. 
So we're going to take a quick tour through our files that Rempi has automatically created for us so that we can see what's going on. The first thing you're going to notice is there's this lot of red text here. And what that is, is comments. That actually has no impact whatsoever. If you put a hash in front of any piece of text, it will turn it into a comment for the remainder of that line and enables us to put notes in the file, as you can see just here. The first piece of actual code in this script file is define E equals character Eileen. And what we're doing here is we're defining the letter E to mean that a character is being referenced. And as you can see further down here, we've actually got some green text, which is our dialogue prefixed with the letter E. And that is where we're calling this. So what we're saying to Renpy is that this character is saying this line of text. And if we actually run our game by hitting launch project, if we hit start, you can see Eileen is saying you've created a new Renpy game. Then we click again. Once you add a story, pictures and music, you can release it to the world. And then you click again and then it comes out and quits. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. There's a couple of other lines of text here. Label start, return, scene, BG room and show Eileen happy. Labels are like procedures in other coding. What they are is essentially we're telling Rempi that label start is where we want our game to start. And where it says return, that means that's the end of that block of code. So if we were to actually remove all of these comments, once we've removed all the comments, you can see how basic this file is. We're defining our character. We're telling the game, once you've started, scene BG room, what scene does is it clears the screen and it replaces whatever is on the screen with whatever we follow up with. So in this case, we're saying BG room. It's calling the BG room image and putting that in our background. And then we're saying show Eileen happy. Now Eileen happy is actually a side image which hasn't yet been defined. So what Rempi will do is put a placeholder image in its place and then it's calling our two lines of dialogue and then it's ending. What we can do is if we want it to keep repeating this over and over again, we could put jump start in there like so. And then what will happen is our code will jump back to the start once it's got to here. The problem we're going to encounter here though is that is what is known as an infinite loop because there's no way to get out of the program. So we generally don't do that because that can potentially break our game and possibly our computer. So we avoid doing that as much as possible. Notice there are three other files in our file explorer on the left hand side. The first one, gui.rpy. And what it's doing is this is telling RenPy what all of our fonts, our colors, our sizes, even our game resolution is to be set to. As you can see, GUI in it 1920 by 1080. And then it's a fairly long file. And all it's doing is defining our text sizes. As you can see here, GUI.text size, our main menu images, and our text colors. We can get more advanced into that further down the line, but for now, just know that's what this file contains. Options.rpy is the next file of interest to us. And this is where we set the options for the game, such as what the game's name is, whether it's going to show the name in our title, in our main menu, the config version. So if we're developing a game, we'd maybe have that set to 0.01 or something of the like. And as you can see, there's a lot of options that we set in here, such as default transitions. We can set our whether our window shows and hides itself automatically, window transitions, the capital or the characters per second. That's so that's we can have the text scrolling onto the screen one letter at a time rather than all at once. Setting it to zero means it's super fast. And then you can set it at a number if you want the characters to appear on the screen. And that is basically what happens in the options to RP Wi-Fi. Screens is where things get a little bit interesting. This is where all of the game's default screens are defined. Now, screens are kind of like your windows in an application. So for example, the window where the text appears is a screen. The window that appears when we right click to show our save files is a screen. And we can define our own screens in Rampi, which actually allows us to create really powerful user interface elements really, really simply. Thanks very much for watching that video. I look forward to hearing your comments. In the next video, we're going to go a little bit more advanced into creating our own characters and adding some dialogue options. 
See you in the next one. Bye-bye.